What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. It is Friday, August 20th, and we are about to preview the week two of the NFL preseason. Today's podcast, of course, as you can see by the brightly colored light behind me and the the delightful looking cooler behind Ryan Wilson, brought to you by... That's right, Bud Light. Share a Bud Light with us as you listen long. Go to BudLight.com slash delivery now to order. BudLight.com slash delivery. It'll give you a plethora of options, including like Walmart, Amazon, Harris Teeter, Wawa, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. Anywhere that has Bud Light and can deliver it to your house, get yourself some Bud Light sent to you and uh, drink drink it. Uh, enjoy your cold, ice cold Bud Light while you listen to this podcast. We're going to look into some week two action of the preseason. We'll recap uh, my, t- my our not so great gambling week from um, week one. What happened? I, I wasn't listening because I wasn't on. Uh, you you and I made the picks, man. Oh, I thought you meant like you and um, Jordan or someone had someone joked about Jordan saying the bets didn't go right or something. <laughs> right, right, right. I was like, t- I was like, back the Packers, and then the Packers ruled everyone out. I was, and I, oh, I see, didn't go well. Uh, though we got hosed on the Lions. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, in the feed, tons of analytics slash nerd week. We had uh, both Sam and Steve from PFF on. Mm. We'll, of course, recap the weekend on Sunday, and then we'll do some fantasy week next week. Speaking of fantasy, the fantasy football today, draft prep is underway, and uh, they're doing prepping for charity month or something along the draft prepping for charity, whatever they're calling it. Anyway, they're trying to uh, trying to raise money for St. Jude, as we do every week. And th- since, you know, we're in these COVID times and we're not exactly traveling down to do the telethon. I'm not going to get choke slammed by Eric Young uh, this year. Ryan won't be hanging out with his buddy Fred. Who, who are you hanging out with? Where? At the draftathon. Um, you mean sitting on the on the yeah. desk? Yeah. Uh, uh, there was uh, Fred Taylor, maybe. Lindell White. Fred Taylor was there. Lindell White was a good fun conversation. Um, you know, did I tell you that Lindell White like texted me? He's like, "Who should I take number one overall two years ago?" I was like, what? Yeah, he <laughs> thought he thought you were Dave Richard. That was a problem. <laughs> This is probably right. He didn't realize you were you. At any rate, uh, instead, throughout the month, we're going to have the FFT crew have various eBay auctions supporting St. Jude. <laughs> Included in those are, and I, I don't know when we agreed to this. Yes, that is right. Pre-season is- calls with the Pick 6 Super Friends. You can bid on a 10-minute private Zoom call with myself, Ryan Wait Wilson, or John Breach. And by the way, 10-minute private Zoom call. What's up? I am extremely angry like previously i didn't have any bids and that's fine i get that and now breach and i both have one bids for ten dollar each will brinson's bids are clearly coming from family members because this is straight up bonkers <laughs> and saying do you know what it's up to now have you looked recently uh no i don't know i'm not the type of uh, egotistical uh, you 100 no. 76 dollars yeah. 76 dollars and 75 cents for bids who are these people that are bidding on will brinson because i think you can see their names right uh probably jamie eisenberg it's 50 dollars right now yeah, you can bid with Larry Hart's team. Wait a second. Jamie's well above $50 because I think that Dave Richard is up pretty high too. I think Dave's in the hundreds. Dave is bidding on himself. Mike McClure much, up much, to one or two fifty. Much like Will Brinson. So, so uh, but anyway, go to yeah, CBS, go. go to CBS Sports dot com slash ebay to donate and bid. CBS Sports.com slash eBay. And I'll, I'll point out it says 10 minute private Zoom call. If you if 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 somebody bid if somebody buys my First of all, if somebody wants to buy all of me, Wilson, and Breach, we could definitely do something where we do it on a pod, like we do it on a podcast instead. Like, and not up. only that, you will have to hang up on us because we'll be on the phone much longer than you want to talk to us. That is so, correct. Yeah, and, and if like, it's of- enough for me, I will happily. Ten, what, ten minutes isn't very much. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hang up on ten minutes. What we'll do? You, you want me to come and do your draft with you? I'll, I'll show up and do the. Uh, Imagine if Debo got paid ten minutes every every ten minutes. He's on the like ten minutes, uh, ten dollars every ten minutes. He's on the phone with us. He would have retired. Yeah, he'd be a millionaire, billionaire. But here's, uh, here's, here's, here's my com slash eBay. Go bid for the super friends. You don't have to. We're not talking much, but like let's boost it up. It's for a good cause. Uh, and if somebody bids, if somebody bids a good amount for these, like I'll, we'll figure out some some way to do something really cool uh, with the crew. One, one, I have a couple of requests actually. First of all, I want to beat Breach. Breach and I are currently tied at ten dollars each, one bid, bid, bid each. So let, let's let's beat. You know that ten dollars is the starting bid. That means there's no. Bid. But I had zero bids before, so someone bid at least one. So I was I was at zero. <laughs> so that's a start. <laughs> Number two, if if I can beat Brinson, I'm I'm getting the Ryan Finley tattoo. So don't worry about that. That's going to happen. I was actually talking to more people about it because Breach's dereliction, dereliction of duty continues oh. to be a be an issue, but uh. We'll figure out something to do in terms of uh, 
revealing secrets about Brinson's hair plugs to make Brinson get a tattoo. We'll figure something else out. But if I can be Brinson, that would that would make my year. Uh, yeah. yeah. Good luck to you. I, I wish you I all the best. Gonna, I, I wish I you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. I know you mean that. I, I don't. I don't mean no. that. All right. So anyway, cbsports.com slash eBay. Go bid for us. Have, help us bump up our prices. We we need it for. Um, you know, By the uh, way, my my picture for the eBay auction are much handsomer than Breach. Breach looks like one of his serial killer like uh, mug shots. And Brinson's. What, I did, was, anyway, I'm, I'm making fun of Miami. Uh, I'm making. I'm doing the upside down. The U. Uh, is that what that is? I didn't, yeah, I didn't, it's, I didn't it's know. Like that. 15 years ago, I look nothing like that. I look. It's like oh, you get your get your old haircut there too. Yeah, it's like pre-child, and like I'm clear, I'm like young, energetic, happy about life. Pre-hair plugs, that's what that was. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's get to the. You know, it's great, by the way. Like, by the way, Debo's out of town, so Lisa Roman's filling in. I'm shout she out lost, to Lisa. She lost the bet, but she, <laughs> by the end of this, is going to be pretty much convinced that you have hair plugs. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you keep telling everybody that <laughs> I have hair plugs. Debo I, don't. Too. I just don't. I mean, <laughs> like Debo doesn't talk. Badly about anyone, but he is leaning into this Brinson hair plugs theory. It's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, let's talk about what to watch for this coming weekend. Last night, the Patriots and Eagles played a preseason football game, and uh, it was amazing. Awesome. I, I told, I told, wow, Jalen Hurts, wow, it was a great game. That's how you know that Debo Debo did the rundown before he left town. Is he he's pumping up Jalen Hurts in a, in a in a preseason game that hadn't happened yet? Tonight's action: the Bengals take on the Washington Football Team. And the Chiefs play the Cardinals. What intrigues you most about this evening's action, Ryan? Well, I don't. Do we know if Joe Burrow's playing? Didn't play last week. In, in the I would be very surprised if Joe Burrow plays. All right, that's but Washington concern. is minus five, and the total is thirty-four and a half. I, th I think that line implies that uh, we will not be seeing Joe Burrow. Last week, uh, Patrick Mahomes did play one short series, which stands. To, that's sort of typically what has happened in the past. Uh, I didn't stay up to watch the Cardinals game last week. I don't want to even know what happened in that game. But, I mean, I think sort of the thing with the Chiefs is the defense is something you're interested in, sort of the playmakers after the the sort of round one starters or the, the first-ring starters behind Kelsey, behind Tyreek. Um, what do you see there? So so those are obviously things to watch. Uh, again, with the Bengals, are they going to be better? Like, I mean, that's what I keep coming back to. Are they going to be better than they were last year? I'm not convinced they are, especially if the concern with Joe Burrow is less physical but more mental as he comes back from from the ACL. And he of told course, reporters uh, earlier this week that he was he's he was feeling comfortable in the pocket again. So that's good, I guess. But he's he 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 trying to stem the tide of of concern coming out of Cincinnati. No, I, I don't. I don't know that they're going to be better. I don't. I, I don't think that I'd be interested in taking their over win total at at six right now. You said on HQ last week that you would. Well. Yeah. <laughs> That's, a good oh, oh. <laughs> That's the comeback my nine year old has when I call him out on something. He goes, they, uh, they, they ask us questions and we have to answer them. Like, I'm, I didn't, I don't think I said like the Bengals are a good bet. I just said if I were taking one, I would take the over. I mean, I can go back and forth on six and a half or whatever it is. That's not that. There's big. no way they're winning seven. No. Uh, Andy Reid said that start the starters would play an entire half against Arizona on. Friday night or this e this evening. So if you can bet on the first half of the line, and that probably won't be available until right the day of the game. Today, I guess it's probably available now. It's, uh, we, we record this on Thursday. It wasn't available. Um, Chiefs are probably minus two in the first half. That's a pretty good bet. So I'm going to put that down on, on the old week two lock sheet. By the way, I had a horrific day on Wednesday gambling. Just I think I went 0-7-1 or something. Ridiculous. Is that baseball? Uh, baseball and tennis. Golly, gamble on tennis. I love tennis. I know, I, I didn't, it didn't occur to me they could gamble on it, but I suppose you can bet on anything you want to. <laughs> you don't think you can gamble on tennis? Yeah. Well, I never, I literally never thought about it because I don't watch tennis and, you know, I don't gamble frequently enough to be thinking about betting on tennis. All right. Well, uh, that, that's going to be the first bet. KC, first half, minus, uh, I, I don't have it right now, but I'm going to say minus two. Okay. What do you care? I would say that I'm interested to see how the Chiefs' revamped offensive line looks. I don't know if I love the idea, and I don't know if this includes Patrick Mahomes being out there for that that length of time. I wouldn't play him. The I'm now of the opinion, and this used to be a thing, which is funny with uh, you know, the concerns about playing these starters. I ain't playing Patrick Mahomes. Why? What's the, what's the point? Like if Justin Herbert ain't playing the entire preseason, what are you doing? 
Yeah, I think it was probably is it probably to get some reps of that offensive line would be my guess. No, I get it, but is it worth it? And at the end of the day, it probably doesn't matter. I mean, Tom Brady played last week. He's played forever when he's with the Patriots, and he always seems to to come out of come out of it looking looking pretty rosy. So the I'm looking. I finally I was seeing a sport. I don't know the sports line not do preseason picks. I'm trying to find who RJ. It's, the uh, it's hard to find them on the. On the sheet, actually. Yes, yeah, so I on just went to com. I've, I've had trouble with that as well, but they yeah. do have them on there, I believe. I went to Caesars to look at just the lines, so it's minus yeah. three for the Chiefs overall. But look, well, here's the thing. So the first half of the Chiefs, the Cardinals, like the Cardinals in your mind are the worst team in that division, the uh, NFC West? Mm, yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. I have the Rams and the, the 49ers are a good bit ahead of the Seahawks and Cardinals. Well, here's the math. I think I was talking about this in HQ last week or so. Here's the math that you do for that I'm doing to figure out who's bad in that division. All right, let's rank the head coaches in that division. It's either Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, number one. Pete Carroll's probably third. I don't know. You may have him higher than that. And Cliff Kingsbury's fourth. I mean, there's no debate, right? Yeah, that's pretty, pretty. All right, let's rank the quarterbacks. Russ Wilson is one. Matthew Stafford is two. You might have Stafford first, knowing how much you love him, even compared to Russ. Kyler three. Well, that's going to say. It could be Kyler ahead of Jimmy. But again, is Kyler as three plus your coach Cliff Kingsbury is four? Does that get you a lot of wins? No, mm, no, I'm not convinced that the Cardinals are good or, or will be. Remote. No, look, their defense could be great. I get all that. JJ Watt, uh, Chandler Jones, whatever. But that ain't going to be enough to overcome. So my point is that even if they play their um, 22 through 53 starters uh, players for the second half, is that going to overcome a, a 14 point deficit in the first half? Should Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes and company out there? Yeah. Probably not. No, because Chad Henney's good. Um, Anthony Gordon actually didn't do terribly when he had spot uh, got a little little run last week. So that over under is forty one. I'm kind of intrigued by that over. Yeah, but you're right about you. Were, you mentioned this last week. The unders are typically the ones you don't see a lot of points. Well, but see, so this is going to be. I, well, I'm curious too. How are coaches going to handle this with only three preseason games now? Because they didn't play anybody in week one. Are they going to ramp up to week three, or is week three where you call the dogs off and you don't play anybody? Well, a lot of teams played their starters in week one, not necessarily for very long, but yeah. we saw a lot of a lot of guys get run out there. But uh, yeah, that's the other thing to import. Right, set of four, we're down to three preseason games. How do you sort of manage that? And Emory Hunt, our buddy, made a good point. He's at Sports Line and covers the draft that week one of the NFL regular season may look, in terms of raggedness, like week four of the preseason has typically looked because there's no longer one of those things. So that's just also something to keep in mind as you as you move forward. Yep, uh, that is a good point. All right. Hmm. Yeah. Bengals, Washington. The Bengals are kind of trash. I like Washington. I, I like what Ron Rivera is doing. I like this team a lot. I think they're actually, I'd like them to win the division. Um, you know, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys clearly are favorites for a reason, but. Well, I, th I think Washington should be favored, honestly. It's weird that we sort of agree on a lot of these things as we sit it here. Is, it is bizarre. The good news is that you can change your mind as you have done with the, uh, the idea that the Bengals are going to win 10 games. The uh, Saturday's action, the Jets and Packers. I lead with that because tough news from the Jets. Mm. Carl Lawson carted off on Thursday, according to Mike Garofalo of NFL Media. He heard a popping sound um, in his knee, and the Jets are, quote, holding their breath, which sounds like Carl Lawson, who is a huge addition, was having a great camp, really impressing uh, coaches in the front office. Sounds like he might be done. Uh, potentially for the year. We'll see. I mean, that, obviously they have to get an MRI, but if, if he did in fact tear his ACL or his Achilles or something like that, then you know he's going to be lost for the year, and an already bad defense is only going to be worse. Uh, you know who else heard a popping sound in their knee when they got hurt? Uh, oh, oh, when you tore your ACL. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully he's – he. I'm presuming he's in considerably better shape than I am, so <laughs> – Hopefully that's not it. Hopefully it's not it's Achilles. Hopefully it's not anything. Did you mention Rap Sheet said uh, suffered lower leg practice today? He's in his Achilles. And then as you mentioned, Garofalo said he he was told that Lawson heard a pop. Eesh. Not good. Um, the Jets, by the way, are two, minus two and a half in this game. I think that's a bet as well because the Packers will not be ha not have Aaron Rodgers and likely will not have Jordan Love either. Which means right. yeah. Kurt Benekert. Is that Kurt Benekert? Is that right? But Nate, whatever. Had, I think Boyle's on the roster too. I don't know what his status is, but he was. No, he's not. He's not on the roster. Yeah. So he's in Detroit. My bad. Yeah. Did you hear? 
<laughs> uh, Rob Domofsky asked Aaron Rodgers about the uh, about that tight end, the six string tight end. No, he what said. He said, man, he's like, good. Can't wait to see how he plays in Buffalo next year. Joking oh. about Jake Kumaro and Rodgers almost spit you know, out of the water laughing at it. I was talking to our buddy Wes McElroy. Jesus, Rob. I talking to our buddy Wes McElroy on uh, Thursday out of Richmond. And I said, basically, Aaron Rodgers is to the point where, you know, like when you were growing up and you were, whatever, eight or nine years old and your, your grandparent, your grandfather was like 50. And he was, you know, he didn't, he was measuring what he said. And by the time you were in your 30s, and he was like 80. He was just saying whatever. And whatever he wanted. Yeah, that yeah. is Aaron Rodgers at this point in his career. He just bring it on. Yeah, and he's like, like just laughing about it, like doesn't yeah. care. Um, but, Kurt Benkert and Jacob Dolega. Dolgala. Dolgala. I've, I've never even heard of that human being. Jacob Dolgala. Have you oh heard of him? Gosh. Did he go to an FCS school? Let's see. He played. Central Connecticut oh, State. No. Okay, yeah. He played uh, Central know. Connecticut. And then, oh, boy. He looks like a. This looks like a preseason superstar. So, yeah, uh, the Jets minus two and a half. The Packers were favored at one point in time in that line, and now the Jets have moved because presumably the Jets will uh, at least attempt to win this football game. It does not sound like Green Bay cares Well, all what happens. Here's the thing. Last week, uh, Josh, uh, Josh, um, Zach Wilson actually did pretty well in this. He had two series, went six for nine, and um, it's funny. People got angry at Flo uh, Mike Florio on Twitter because he said that uh, it was a quiet performance and people, you know, people get super touchy in the preseason when you're not pumping up the guys they want you to pump up. But um, yeah, we'll get to see more of him, see what he does. So I, th I thought he had a good start last week at every like first uh, rookie or, or second year quarterback who didn't get a lot of run in year one looked pretty good. There was no real duds. In fact, you could argue that um, uh, Trey Lance went five for 14. He had the worst stat line of any of the guys, even though he had some pretty incredible throws. So, again, we'll just see what these young guys do in week two and see which of them end up winning jobs. I think it's pretty clear that Zach Wilson is going to be the starter in, in New York, so you want to see him play better. Packers' defense is, is a slightly better improved, so he'll have perhaps some opportunities against some of the first-teamers there. Uh, but whatever happens, even against a bunch of third-teamers, you don't want him out there throwing interceptions left and right. No. Yeah, you want him to play well, and you want – I mean, he just needs all the reps he can get. It's surprising when these teams don't let their um, – don't let these quarterbacks play as much as possible. The Chicago you, Bears. Oh, hold on quickly. Did you see what CJ, CJ Mosley said nope. last week? Is it nice or mean? Um, he said, "Come on." Oh, where is it? I'm where gonna paraphrase. It? Paraphrase that came out of the quote, but he said, "If you're sleeping on the Giants, you're gonna end up getting your ass beat." So, I keep on the on the Jets, not the Giants. That'd be awesome. I was like, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> That'd be awesome. The Jets. Off the Giants. He's like, you're getting... sleeping, I'm telling you, this Giant <laughs> team, man, you better watch out for him. Uh, if be. you're sleeping on the Jets, you're gonna get your ass beat. Yep. So don't sleep on the Jets, folks. That's don't paraphrasing. Don't sleep on planes, kids. Don't sleep on planes. That's right. That's that's me paraphrasing. Bills at the Bears. The Bears are minus four and a half in this game. Justin Fields dealing with a groin injury, but uh, Matt Nagy didn't rule out him. Playing. Practice on Thursday. Didn't practice on Wednesday. Uh, on Wednesday, it didn't sound like he might play, but now it sounds like he he will. And uh, if it's me, eh, maybe don't play the kid with the the strained groin in the preseason game. We'll see. I think there's so much excitement. It's so funny, like talking to our, our buddies Joe Musso and Chris Hassel, both um, realistic Bears fans. They are cautiously optimistic about Justin Fields, and I think you want to be. I'm sure in the privacy of the home, they're doing the the Tom Cruise and risky business dance because <laughs> I mean this is legit something you haven't seen as a Chicago Bears fan in forever. I mean, it's the he was fine. This is games. He over. was really good. The first two series, he didn't look yeah. great. But he he did a lot of things that looked like Ohio State. And go, oh boy! But again, Matt Nagy, which is hysterical because he's such a wet blanket in general. He was a wet blanket a few days after saying, "Listen, we did zero game planning. We we're literally just running plays out there to see you can do what you're doing against second, third teamers. Let's, you know, stop hey, the break. Take down a notch is what he's saying. He's right, but I mean, let the people enjoy. Let the let the people enjoy. Uh, oh, by the way, quickly, what do you think of the Packers throwbacks? You see those? I did not. Ooh, I I'll take him out. Uh, but what did, what did you think about Andy Dalton's quote? It's yeah. my team now. Well, it was it was taken out of context and overblown by most. He people. meant for yeah. the moment. I think he he was like, you know what? For the few minutes, I'm going to be the starter. It's gonna... it's almost verbatim what Mike Glennon said in the preseason before when when asked about Mitchell Trubisky possibly getting the job. You know what's hysterical? Because you you're my your buddies with Mike Glennon, and um, I had a dream that Mike Glennon was starting the pre I can't I just remember this started a preseason game and, and like literally like through like 12 interceptions it wasn't his fault whatever and I was just thinking uh I think the dream was about you trying to justify it on the podcast why it wasn't that big a deal that's where I'm at in, in the preseason mm. 
sort of figuring out where we are. I'm trying to find these uniforms for you. I, I saw somebody tweeting about them. I'll, I'll go find them in a minute. The um, yeah, uh, Bears Bills. That's, that's an early game. Looks like that is a two o'clock. I'm o'clock. super. I'm excited to watch more of Justin Fields. Um, I, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, the Bills are. I mean, they're going to be good, so they just want to you know, stay the course as 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 it were. Um, not Bears so four and a half point favorites. By the way, if Fields is definitely playing, I would probably bet the Bears, but I will have. I will. I'll, I'll, I'll probably force something. What's like. the call on Josh Allen? Do we know that? Uh, let's see. I wouldn't play him, but that's where I'm going to be on every one of these guys. Josh Allen will not play awesome. in the Great. preseason game against the Bears, which you – oh, oh. Well, missing the Barry, missing the big storyline then here. You know what that means. Mitchell Trubisky revenge game in the preseason. Oh, I thought you were going to say something about Jake Fromm, who you had going first to roll in your mock draft. Get out of here. A month and a half, a year and a half ago. Uh, yeah, no, I, Mitchell I Trubisky. Oh, maybe I maybe I do like the Bills plus four and a half with Trubisky, uh, with Trubisky leading the way against them. You've seen Mr. Trubisky play, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a revenge game, though. I love that you love the revenge games. Uh, I love a good revenge game. This isn't a good one. Yeah. Probably. All right. Panthers and Ravens are playing. I don't know if you were on this. You got in on this tweet action, but our buddy Joe Person, who covers the Panthers for the Athletic, was, I think, tweeting about this. On Thursday, the Ravens had no one out there at wide receiver. Like, I think five or six wide receivers down. And I think the Panthers defense had like six interceptions in practice. So, uh, there was a big scuffle that took place, I think, actually, too. Is And um, they were sort of going back and forth with each other. It's probably uh, related to those picks. Um, it was, uh, I think, J.C. Horn and. Just J- and Marcus Peters, I believe. Oh, that sounds about right. Yeah, with the even two, though they uh, both are defensive backs for opposing teams. Yeah, uh, he said um, it's just two competitive teams. Marcus Peters, you know, he talks a lot. <laughs> True that. Uh, so that. There was the scuffle between those two teams, and they'll play. So I would expect this to be fairly, uh, I don't know, not intense. But I will say one of the th- one of the um, guys I'm looking forward to seeing out there is Terrace Marshall out of LSU. Had a good first week. I yeah. watched a ton. of – I'm sure you were busy doing golf slash tennis, but I, I had to watch a lot of preseason games last weekend. I watched a lot of preseason. I love the I love the Terrace Marshall looks. Is Sam Darnold playing this week? Is he gonna give him another week? Like, why didn't he play last week? I was like, what are we doing? Sam Darnold, by the way, mate, uh Matt Rule is leaning towards playing Sam Darnold against the Ravens. Is he hurt? Like what what's going on? I don't know. It's not like he's a he's going in the Hall of Fame or something. We're just taking it easy on him. He's in a new offense and in a, with a new team. Maybe he has mono. Uh, several start quote several starters will play quote a small amount for the Panthers in this matchup. That's fine, but he didn't play one single snap last week. Will Greer didn't look terrible actually, and you know, I mean, in, in the best sense, positive. And and PJ Walker looked pretty good. Uh, he had a couple good throws. I think he ended up with he may have had a few interceptions by the time it was all said and done. But there's some things to like about this Panthers team. But again, you know, they're I think third place is. Interesting. So the reason why they're not playing Darnold is they want to have this is petrifying if you're a Panthers fan. They uh we just according to Matt Rule, quote, just making sure we have the full complement of guys around him that can help him, end quote. I, and here's the other thing. They traded Greg Little the other day. Like that, yeah, that he was little, getting cut. He I I mean I you, I've been hearing I've been hearing he was gonna get cut. But the thing is he's a second round I didn't pick. Say that for months too. So, I mean it was a disastrous pick. Right. That's the takeaway. That was yeah. um Marty, Marty Herney pick. Yeah, Marty Herney's uh, last draft, I believe. That was the Nashville draft. When they took Brian, right. Burns yeah. the fir- Brian Burns in the first round, Greg Little in the second round. Brian Burns, I love. I believe they actually selected uh, Greg Little while we were out on a bachelorette party bus. We being you and Breach. I refuse Correct. to do that because I love yes. my wife. Uh, so, yeah, that's but that's a red flag, man. If they're not starting Sam Darnold because they want to have everybody around him. Um, well, I think you don't want to get him. Ki- you may, it's a red flag in the fact that you don't feel confident. That's what I'm saying. On any uh, level. DJ Moore was hurt in practice on Wednesday. He can't. No, excuse me. Thursday. He came back on Thursday and got hurt. Right. And Robbie Anderson was out for two straight days. Taylor Moten took uh, snaps at left tackle with Cam Irving leaving early. That is basically they're petrified hmm. about more injuries and Darnold looking like uh, behind. Do do. By the way. Uh, we're doing this on Thursday, so as the tweets come in from practice, we may have to 
refer back to previous games. Sean McDermott to, uh, on Thursday on Stephon Diggs. He's injured. He's injured, so he's not going to play. But um, we hope to get him back here in a more active role in the field at least in the next couple of days. So it sounds like he, hopefully it's not a big deal, but he clearly won't be playing in the in the preseason game. Yeah, more than likely not. Why is Baltimore favored by five? I guess because no Sam Darnold. Can you oh, wait, I'm going to have Baltimore in there too. John Harbaugh is the king of preseason. That's why. That's right. Yeah. Minus three and a half with no Darnold, likely. Yeah, I'll take Baltimore there. But it's like Darnold's a difference maker. We don't know how he's going to play. He could be terrible. Uh, the Falcons and Dolphins playing. Kind of an intriguing game, actually, because. They're, you know, these two teams, like the Panthers and Ravens, these two teams have been practicing against each other. Mm. And, I mean, I'm not going to get on some kind of Falcons hype wagon or anything like that. But Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts have been smoking everybody in practice and all preseason long. And so there is a pretty good chance. Uh, actually, Xavier Howard uh, had an interception w- when Matt Ryan was throwing to uh, Calvin Ridley earlier. But um, it sure is – it sure is uh, – looking like that offense is going to be at least fun to watch. Yeah, the, the big question, at least in the regular season, is what happens to Calvin Ridley in a post-Julio Jones world. And, you know, the early indications are maybe he's not, he'll be fine. Kyle Pitts is, is awesome, based on what we saw at Florida, where he never dropped a, uh, a ball thrown to him in the red zone. And um, there are a ton of other issues with this team. I will say this. I was impressed with the way Tua Tagovailoa played last week against the Chicago Bears. My concern was that he would look like he did last year. He had a little zip on his throws. He seemed to be moving a little better, played a little more confidence. He had a terrible red zone interception. Um, just a hair late on the ball he threw across the middle of the field and was in- intercepted. Great play by the, the Bears defender. But I think overall, if you're Brian Flores, you're like, oh, okay, he's not going to be a huge issue. So that's that's good news. Whether that matters uh, to any degree in this game, we'll see. The Dolphins are favored by five, which is my word seems like a lot. Xavier Howard and and um, Byron Jones did not play last week. I don't know what the plan is this week for them to play, which would it would certainly be a a, a true test against the two guys you mentioned, Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts. But I don't know what their status is going to be. Yeah, I don't think that um, the Falcons have announced whether Matt Ryan will play either. He did not play against the Titans. I would expect that they. I didn't. You know, I didn't realize that uh, he he and, did you know he and Brian Flores were uh, teammates in college. Brian Flores went to BC. I didn't even know that. <laughs> Me either. Um, is Matt yeah. Schaub still the backup for the Falcons? That's a joke. Just because he's been there forever. Oh, they have Felipe Franks. I didn't watch the Falcons preseason game last week, so I don't know. How Felipe he Franks ran. It was like the leading rusher in that game. He's. Oh, he should be. I, I would like for him to stick around because he he's physically so talented. AJ McCarron's the other backup who uh, some folks derisively described as a Mac Jones coming out, or Mac Jones as AJ McCarron. Just I mean, AJ McCarron a, described himself as Tom Brady coming out. So I remember writing that story from the combine. Trans- Dolphins are minus five in this one. That would seem to indicate that Matt Ryan is not playing. I think, or yeah. only play a, uh, maybe not even a full half would be my guess. Like the under over under is thirty seven. Like I I think it's the under all day long. Yep, I would probably agree with that. Although I could see him taking some shots down the field with Tua. The Falcons' defense shouldn't be very good, and if Ryan and Ridley do play, maybe they get over forty. Be careful taking unders. This week, people, because we we had all these unders hit in week one, but now there's going to be more starters playing. So don't blindly take all the unders, even though they did really well last week. The Lions play the Steelers, a matchup of two teams, two basement dwelling teams. <laughs> um, the under is 12? What? <laughs> uh, the, the Steelers are minus five and a half. The over under is 37. Yeah. You want my thoughts? Or I thought you yeah. said something what, what do you want from the Steelers? What do you want to see? I don't know if Big Ben's playing. I don't care. It seems to have been a – it's a battle between – a battle, quote-unquote. Steelers fans feel like it's a battle between Mason Rudolph and Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins actually played pretty well in the second preseason game. And Mason Rudolph, to his credit, wasn't bad either. But I think Steelers fans so desperately want Dwayne Haskins just to be the man, which is sort of funny. I mean, you know, they're, they're done with Mason Rudolph. And maybe there's a situation where Mason gets traded uh, in a couple of weeks if another team need, needs a, a veteran backup. Whatever. We'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So that'll be something to watch. Chase Claypool left practice with what looked like a serious knee injury on Wednesday. It turns out it wasn't serious, at least based on reports. So that's a good sign. There's a chance that the offensive line, which hasn't, which has featured many second teamers because of injuries and whatnot in the first two preseason games, will have their starters back or close to all their starters back. So that's that's the biggest question mark in going into the season. How's the offensive line going to be, which is completely revamped? Um you and Diardo, like you Steelers fans, keep saying keep saying that um, 
what? That you're like, ah, I think it's better. I think it's an upgrade. I can't be. Can it be worse? It could be better and still be a C minus D plus unit. That's the thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it could it could be upgraded and still be terrible for sure. You're the one who said, <laughs> I think you may have bet this or talked talk about betting it. Dwayne Haskins makes more starts than Big Ben. Wasn't that you? It's Carson Wentz. <laughs> oh. <laughs> for, their, for their careers there, for their careers. Oh, that's hysterical. Yeah, uh, for it's, the like Lions, a, it's like an eternity bet. I have, for the I have, Lions last week, we, we, we bet the Lions because we were going with the Steve Spurrier theory, and that blew up in our faces. No, they should have they covered. I didn't watch the game. Yeah, they're playing the so Bills cool. on that. It was like that Friday night game, and they should have they should have covered easily. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna get back on the train with the uh, the, the the Steve Spurrier theory. I'm gonna take Detroit plus five and a half. Add that to the card. We got four. The games Steelers are now. actually really good in the preseason. They're winning these games, and a lot of times they're winning in the second half once the starters come out. So I don't. Uh, oh, Haskins has been playing really well, hasn't he? Yeah. So I don't know how. Maybe we should bail on this Detroit bet. No, I, I was going to ask you, what do you feel about Dan Campbell? Some people in the media don't like him. I love him. I, I like. I, I love. I've loved him since Jump Street, since he was the interim coach in Miami. How long do you think until like when Detroit goes? How many games in a row do they have to lose before he turns into Matt Patricia in terms of being angry? <laughs> uh, six. Uh, all right. That sounds about right. Like three th- feels like too soon because he knows his team's probably not very good. Well, they're not very good, but he he certainly knows that as well. Uh, yeah, six sounds about right. Oh, and six will be the the turning point. That, yeah, I could I could see that being the uh, the rough the rough stages of things. The Titans and Bucks are matching up. Tampa minus one over the Titans. The over under thirty five. One would presume that Tom Brady won't be playing then. Who knows? He played last week for a series. Yeah, if he played a series last week, then surely he'll play. Why? Why are they only a? Their team um, is really really good. I mean, the Titans are good as well, but their defense is great. The Titans' defense is the, the question mark. Um, I don't even know. I don't know where Bud Dupree's status is, but he had the ACL injury last season, and he he was late to come uh, to get the full health for the Titans in terms of working out during training camp. I don't know where they are and using him in these training camp game in the preseason games. Um, but so I guess Tom Brady made some comment about, oh, you're sticking with that guy. He wasn't talking about Ryan Tannehill. Do we know who he's talking about? Has, has anyone done the the investigative work to figure it out? Uh, the people are still trying to figure it out. I believe. But I, I he, Tom Brady was asked about it. Says so not as you said, right? Not Ryan Tannehill. So Derek could be Derek Carr. <laughs> That's the first name you go to. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that, there is a rumor out there that the Raiders told him they didn't want him. I, I don't care who it is. I know Florio is tweeting that uh, every reporter should ask Tom Brady every day. Another another Florio is obsessed with it. Yeah, I don't care. I mean, the amount of people we talk about before this podcast start, I, I, I'm okay with Tom Brady. <laughs> a bunch of people. You know what? Summer's here, Wilson, and that means it is uh, it's time. It's time to uh, to stock the coolers and start counting down the days until we can enjoy an ice cold Bud Light in an NFL stadium again. By our count, only twenty days remain until we can hear a beer vendor yelling about ice cold Bud Light. To help you take summer by the coolers and get ready to tailgate, Bud Light is giving away coolers every day all summer long. That's right, free coolers all summer long. Or a chance to win free coolers all summer long. Throw away that dusty old ice box you got in the back of your garage and tailgate in style this fall. All you have to do for a chance to win is sign up and enter. Go to BudLightLegends.com. Again, that's BudLightLegends.com. You go in there, you sign up, you get entered for a chance to win one of these snazzy, bear-proof, nine-day frozen ice-holding coolers that you can see over Wilson's right shoulder there. They are giant. They hold a, a lot of Bud Light for you and your friends. And they again, they, they really are bear-proof, which is kind of a nice thing. So, oh yeah, do, do, do we? I don't think we bet Titans. Oh, you know what? I did bet Titans Bucks. Um, of course, you did. I took the under. Ooh, thirty-five. Thirty-six. Okay. I was hoping it was going to drop down, and I could get a middle. Oh yeah. Um, oh, Arian said that. No, oh, Bruce Arian said none of the starters are playing. Okay. Why would, he, right. why would Tom Brady play a series last week and then not play? I don't know. Why is Tom Brady so handsome at 44 years old? We don't know. That's a good question. Blaine Gabbert, though. I mean, Blaine Gabbert, Kyle Trask didn't play pretty well last week, so it's more opportunities for him. The rookie out of uh, Florida. So, oh, think of that way you will. Uh, but again, I, I stand firm to this. I mentioned this on the podcast last week. Buccaneers are winning the division and Blaine Gabbert's a starter all 17 games. It doesn't matter. Oh. The coach, look at the two practices against the Titans. As good as I know they'll go physicality-wise, we probably won't play any starters. I don't really want to put our starters back in 
along the offensive line or put them in at all. The offensive line might play in this game only by necessity. We'll see how that goes. All right. So in other words, because they've had good practices against the Titans, he doesn't feel like they need to play in the game. Makes sense. He said, we'll play it by ear, but right now my plan is to play them a significant amount in that ball game because we don't play for another two weeks. So he's going to play them a bunch in the finale, that, that ball game being the, the preseason finale. I know our guys don't want to hit each other for 10 days, so we'll probably play them more in that game than any. So that, that's where, let's file that away that the Buccaneers might be a good bet next week in the third week of the preseason. Uh, but if we're going to take anything here, we may want to uh, may want to take Tennessee. All right, filed away. Done. They haven't announced what they're going to. Rabel hadn't announced what they're going to do with their starters yet. The Colts and the Vikings are playing, and the Vikings are minus two and a half over under thirty eight. Vikings got curb stomp last week. They got they absolutely smashed by the by the Broncos. Yeah, and um. Drew Locke and Teddy B both look pretty good. Drew Locke started that game. I think they're going to swap this time. But as for the the, so Pete Prisco and, and B Mac were in Minnesota this week after that game, um, and Pete said he talked to Zimmer and Zimmer actually, even though he was fired up on the sidelines during the game, he was less concerned when he was just talking to Pete about it because he said, look, we didn't have a lot of our starters in there, yada yada yada. Kellen Mond, who played a lot, didn't look terrible. He didn't start the game, but he looked pretty good uh, given what he had to work with. So perhaps things are are different. But um, let's see. Who are they playing again? I was, I was just talking about the Broncos. <laughs> the uh, Colts. Uh, the Colts. Oh, so here's the thing with the Colts. Like The Colts were actually a lot of fun to watch last week. They won that last second field goal. But Jacob Eason played. Sam Ellinger played. And there's sort of a – that's a competition for who's potentially going to start week one. They both look pretty good. Uh, Ellinger came in second after Eason went out and threw a bad interception but came back and sort of used his athleticism and playmaking ability on the perimeter to, to drive them down for that last – Game winning field goal and, and Jacob Eason did a lot of things you saw at Washington in terms of his arm strength. And he reminds me a lot of Carson Palmer in terms of the way he plays, just needs more experience. So that's something else to keep an eye on uh, against what'll be a, a pretty good defense, depending on how many starters they roll out there for, for Minnesota. Uh, Kirk Cousins said that he doesn't know if he's going to play and that he hasn't been told. And Mike Zimmer hasn't addressed uh, the media about it. My goodness, it is impossible to navigate. <laughs> local news websites. I mean, it's just you turn your ads back on. You just get blitzkrieged with pop-ups. Um, Cousin said that he said, let's see, several players and coaches said that they do need live reps and Clint Kubiak wants to get him reps. But Cousin said he hadn't heard anything from Mike Zimmer. I sort of wonder if, and um, I sort of wonder if Mike Zimmer might want to not see Kirk Cousins on the field. Why? I, just, I, don't th I think this vaccine thing is bothering him. Well, Kelamon yeah. ain't vaccinated either. At least he wasn't when he got COVID a couple weeks ago. It's true. So. Uh, maybe take the uh, Colts plus two and a half. What do you think about that? Ellinger and, and Easton balled out. No, I, I like that. It's in Minnesota. Not that it necessarily matters in the preseason, but they'll be play, they'll be the fans in the stands, which is also, also a nice uh, change of pace. But again, you're seeing the young guys. Um, yeah, I have no issue with that. Hmm. All right, I'm going to add that. We'll we'll add that as a possible. Jonathan Taylor didn't play last week. Marlon Marlon Mack looked good. Um, I don't think your buddy played from NC State last week either. Um, no, he, he, might. he didn't play, in fact. Let me see who else. Oh, I'll tell you who did play. I don't know if you saw this clip. I'll try to dig it up for you real quick. But uh, Benny LeMay played. You don't know Billy, Benny LeMay? Uh, I don't know Benny LeMay. He went to UNC Charlotte. Uh, ah, there you go. Undrafted free agent. He he had a run up the middle where he steamrolled some defensive back for the Panthers, and he stood up and just did a quick flex over the guy. Got flagged for taunting. That was a taunting call. And oh, that was ridiculous. This taunting so, thing is a joke. I, I was as I was telling Musso on HQ, it's, it's solutions to problems that didn't previously exist. Just wasting people's time trying to make this football game shorter. You have these dummies throwing flags on stuff that no one cares about. And again, the dude Benny LeMay doesn't work at a bank. He ain't yelling at customers for you know closing a a, a mortgage. He flexed on the guy because he ran it ran his ass over. What are we doing? Stop it! I just hope it's like one of these things where they over officiate in the preseason and then they dial it back once the season starts. But you know, we'll see. Do your kids? Does your kids get into memes? Yeah, my fourteen year old does. Um, he's all the time talking about memes on the phone. Like he knew about the uh, what's the one I didn't know about? You're the crawling. Uh, yeah, he's like, you don't know what Rick Rolling is? I said, why would I know what Rick Rolling is? But, Rob, um, you know, you know that you know the Michael Jordan meme where he's like, stop it, get some help. 
You know, it's like nope. the GIF. How, okay. I know the cry Michael Jordan one. No, no. So he's there's a gift for Michael Jordan. He's like he's in college. He's like, stop it, get some help. Robbie says that. Oh yeah, yeah I, I know that. Robbie will come to me and be like, stop it, get some help. I'm like, Robbie's you, not wrong. Are you memeing me? What is happening here? I see Robbie lost some teeth. That's how yeah, lost his uh, lost his big tooth, lost his big front tooth. Finally came out. Had his first day of first grade on uh, on Wednesday. Yeah, I don't know if you call. It, I didn't call this my brother in law. One of my kids' teeth. Ticket punchers. I like that. The old ticket punchers are coming in. Ticket punchers? You know, like you punch the ticket and you have two little holes in there, like because your teeth. <laughs> I've never heard that. That's, That's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, use yeah. that one. Yeah, Robbie will like let a loose tooth hanging out in his mouth until oh. <laughs> until it just falls out. He won't let us grab it. That's old school. <laughs> AK was freaking out. She's like, what if it, what if it comes in funny because he's been just, just, just relax. Yeah, it'll be okay. The oh, I lost my place. The Texans and the Cowboys matching up. The Cowboys minus three and a half over under 37 and a half. I am fairly confident we will not see Dak Prescott in this game. As I thought he gets that fairly confident we'll see Deshaun Watson. You will not see Deshaun Watson. <laughs> That's right. Um, yes, uh, Mike McCarthy said there's a quote good chance that Dak Prescott will not play in this preseason game. There's a good chance he probably won't play with this guy. All right, that's it. I got it. Yeah. There's a, there's a good chance he probably won't play. Yes, that's fair, Coach Mike McCarthy said. All right, it's time for an ice cold take presented by Bud Light. Oh, boy. Mike McCarthy, he got to go. That is my ice cold take presented Jeez. by Bud Light. I know we're not even into the second year of Mike McCarthy. I am out on Mike McCarthy as a, co as a coach of the Dallas Cowboys. This dude, not only, I mean, listen to this word salad. He's like, is Dak Prescott going to play in the week two preseason game? There's a good chance he probably won't play. <laughs> yes, that's fair. What? Just yes or no, Mike. Just yeah, just say no because you're not going to play him. And you know why you're not going to play him? Because he's got a strained shoulder, which you somehow is allowed to happen through the rehab process after he's coming back from a broken ankle. To top it all off, Wilson, yes. I can't get past the fact that on hard knocks, it opens up and he's like, oh, somebody give me the GPS reading of uh, the, the uh, it's like trying to, it's like, yeah, all right, we get it. You went to PFF for the summer, which by the way, uh, oh, I see. He like one of the the speed radio. He's like, oh, somebody give me the the parameter speed uh, yeah. speed machine reading real quick. Yeah, whatever, dude. And then, but you know what? You know what really ground my gears? What, Pete? Mojo Monday. I I, I have not watched any episodes this year. Oh, so you don't know what he did? I want to hear what Mojo Monday is. So I, my interest has peaked. Okay. In fact, let's. Did you have a perfect test candidate for this? What would you guess that Mojo Monday is? I mean, it sounds like something Dan Campbell would do in the cafeteria before. No, practice. no, no. Monday. It's a it's a pop culture reference. Oh, Mojo Monday. Just ignore Monday. Think of Mojo. That's a pop culture reference. Mojo. Yeah. Uh, it stands for something, probably. No, no, no. no. It, it, just think of the only time you've ever heard Mojo. Mojo. It feels like an office sort of thing. It's Austin Powers. Ugh. He made an Austin Powers reference, Mojo Monday, in 2021 with a bunch of young dudes on a football team. What are we doing? He, and then so they were playing like the da -na 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 -na, da -na 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 song on Hard Knocks. Oh and he's like, God. and he said in the press conference after, he was like, yep, anytime you can make an Austin Powers reference, that's a good thing. Ugh. I mean, what are we doing? That is Steve Buscemi with the T-shirt on at the high school. Yes, exactly. That's correct. How 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 do you do, my fellow kids? <laughs> Mojo Monday. That's I'm out on I'm out on the Cowboys and Mike McCarthy <laughs> simply because of Mojo Monday. That is oh. my and and the fact that he seems intent on like breaking Dak Prescott in half somehow, some way. That is my ice cold take presented by Bud Light. I will say this: Davis Mills, their third round pick, um, and sacrificial lamb. It felt like when they drafted him, the Houston Texans looked pretty good last week in Denver. He, uh, excuse me, in, in Green Bay, he threw a uh, one bad interception, uh, but the he was out there for for a good bit, and made a lot of good decis decisions. Um, he's more athletic than he might appear. He, he's sort of like Joe Flacco in terms of athleticism. Young Joe Flacco, not current Joe Flacco. Um, so you know, the, I wouldn't call it a bright spot, but it's something to, to sort of look out for if you want to watch the Texans and figure this out. I'll ask you this. Someone asked me this on the radio the other day. Uh, 0 0.5, over or under, how many games does Deshaun Watson play in 2021? Oh, I'll take the over in that. He ain't playing in Houston. That means he's got to get traded. And who's trading for him when you don't know what his situation is? Well, his situation has to get resolved for him to get traded, but yeah. I don't know when that's happening. And now the FBI is involved about extortion. I mean, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not la I'm not laughing at the situation, but I mean, it's like, and now the FBI is involved. That's not yeah. exactly a good thing. Right. You don't, you don't want the FBI up in your biz. For nothing. 
for extortion related matters. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, he could easily not play. Don't get me wrong. It's not, it would not be shocking at all. I just think more likely Bengals over six and a half or Deshaun Watson over a half. <laughs> I mean, the Bengals, I think that's close. Well, you're guaranteed to get 17 games from the Bengals. We don't know that. <laughs> you're, you're, there's a better chance of the Bengals playing 17 games than, than yes. Deshaun Watson starting. That I will agree with. I think, that, I think we can all agree on that. So I, I, I'll take the over on, on Deshaun Watson games. I'm still optimistic mm. he'll play. But, I mean, you know, you can know. see it, too. So I do all these underdog uh, best ball drafts. What does you, that mean? It's you draft all these. You draft you you do the draft, and you, then you just get points for the rest of the year. You don't do a lineup. You don't mess with anything. That's my kind of league. All right, oh, that's great. And um, but you know, see, so Deshaun Watson's going in the final, like the last round, basically. Oh, that makes sense. That's like when um, who was the gosh? Who's the wide receiver? Josh from the Browns who kept moving around teams. Played for the Josh Patriots. Gordon. Yeah, that's like drafting Josh Gordon. And, and I would, I think I did that a couple of years ago. It's like just in the, the off chance that the. And if well, I reinstated him with the with the team. yeah, and I mean, so you you can see it. It's crazy in this preseason. These these like the ADP moves. You know, Jerry Judy plays well. He shoots up into like the fifth round now. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, he comes back and he was going in the tenth round. Now he's in the you know fifth or sixth round. And and Deshaun Watson has drifted all the way to the back end of these drafts. And because people are you know understandably given how late it is in the process, uh, concerned that he won't be playing this year. Did you hear what? Uh... Jerry, they had Jerry Judy mic'd up at, at camp. Do you hear what he said to Vic Fangio the other day? No. Uh-uh. He's like, yeah, where like they were just going through practice and like they were switching up what it drills or whatever. And he said, where where did where did you play? And Vic Fangio said like safety. He said, oh, you would have gotten smoked out here. <laughs> <laughs> Something to that effect. Uh, I was like, oh, look at Judy talking. He knows he's not getting cut if you're talking Good like that Jerry. to the coach. Smoking. All right. Uh, nothing. I don't think I'm taking anything on that. What was the Texans Cowboys line? Eh. Cowboys minus three and a half. Look, man, the Texans. Look, I was surprised at how how hard they played against the Packers. That doesn't necessarily mean anything for the regular season, but maybe they show up against a, a Cowboys team that clearly you're not very. Maybe happy the with. Texans are the Lions, or the 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 Spurrier, like the tryhard team. Yeah, no, that's right. And it seemed like they were playing hard for uh, for the new coach. Um, what's his name? The guy that came from the Ravens, David Cully. For Cully, that's right, yeah. Who, yeah, I mean, it, they that could be the thing is that they're just trying to like try hard for David Cully. They go out there and win the, all these pre, like they go undefeated in the preseason and then actually stink. Yeah. All right, Colts and we already covered Colts and Vikings. Raiders and Rams. The Raiders are minus six and a half in this one, probably because the Rams don't play any of their starters, and we shouldn't expect to see them. I need to see what are the who did the Raiders play last week? I didn't watch the Raiders game last week. I didn't watch much of the Raiders Rams. played the Seahawks and beat them twenty to seven. Yeah, those are two late games. Like I'm not saying I'm not going to start a preseason game at 10, 8, 10 p.m. What are we doing? So I, I will be pleasantly surprised to watch that game this week, so I can get a sort of a first look at those two guys. I'm trying to see. All right, other uh, this is uh, Derek Carr was asked about the preparation for their ra- practice with the Rams. Gruden wanted us to treat it like a game. So our mindset last night, hitting, getting to bed early and even going into waking up this morning, just treating it like a game day mentality because we didn't watch any film on these guys. So you kind of guess, well, I think, what, what is it? Kind of guess, well, I think they run these fronts. We kind of talked about it a little bit, you, you, but you don't know. And so really just getting new blitzes, new coverages, new looks, and just really playing football and seeing what happens when we see our rules. That is What the, what the hell did I that's, just read? That's the Mike McCarthy School of Answering question. <laughs> what was that? That is so weird. I was actually doing, I was doing HQ last week, uh, like the recap in the 10 30, 11 o'clock hour PM. And I did, I did have the game on. So I did get to see a little of my guy, Doug Hodges, who played, you may not know this, he plays for the Rams. Uh, I actually he, did know that. Um, he got a little run. A buddy of mine who is actually just, uh, I'm texting with right now, uh, played, played college uh, football with Doug Hodges. In Sanford. He went to Sanford. That's right. Not Sanford, North Carolina, not Lee County, Sanford. Which is in Alabama, I believe. Does Derek Carr doesn't know if he's going to play or not? I bet he'll play. Yeah, I would not take the Rams here. I would. I'm t- no. I think the under could be a good look here. It under could be because the Rams, the Rams historically don't score score a lot of points in the preseason because they don't play anyone with Sean McVay. I think absolutely. And if, if I think the game is, excuse me, minus five and a half because 
Derek Carr probably will play. I, I know that Marietta was injured last week. There's some concern. I don't know if he's been back at practice this week. So um, even last week, the come on, NFL Jesus, set it up so I can look. So they won last week with Geno Smith playing, McGow playing, and Sean Manning playing. I don't even know. Who is McGow? <laughs> Sean Wagner McGow started for the <laughs> – Oh, that's the Seahawks. Sorry. Nate Peterman played the whole game last week. 29 to 39, 246, no touchdowns, one interception. So no Derek Carr? All Nate Peterman. Nathan Peterman. Nate Peterson. Kind of All right. Let's take the uh let's take the under 35 on the Rams. We got six total bets for this preseason week. Spicy. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I don't know what Mark, Marcus Mariota's situation is in terms of Broncos at Seahawks. Denver minus five in this one. Denver looked like a preseason monster. And well, they basically Jack- played. I was gonna say they basically played both their starting quarterbacks last week, and and last week I just mentioned the Seahawks played well, whoever this McGow guy is, Sean Wagner, Geno, and then Sean, Sean Mannion. Yeah. The um, the Broncos are a bet at minus five. I think Vic Fangio, he hasn't said who he's gonna who his week one starter is gonna be between Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater. If I had to venture a guess, it's gonna be Drew Locke. Ooh, but- I think it's gonna be Teddy B. Really. So the, George Payton has a relationship with Teddy B back in Minnesota. Yeah, he's, right? he's in Minnesota when they drafted right. Bridgewater. Yeah, I just think Fangio will go with Locke because he gives him more upside. And then if he if they don't win games, they'll, they'll flip back to Teddy B. The problem though, is take, that if they lose early, Vic Fangio is probably getting fired. I don't think he gets fired. Not season. during the season, but I think like if they if they win eight eight games. I oh guess. yeah, he could easily get fired after the season. I don't think he gets fired during the season. Right, I just, I agree and that. I want to take. The Broncos, because I think they're going to play. I think they'll do the same thing they did before, where it's you know half of. I think um, Teddy B starts this week, and then Sean, uh, Drew Lock will come in. I think that's right. But th- but there's motivation for both of those quarterbacks to put up points and to play well. Yep. Seahawks don't have a great defense in the first place. Certainly shouldn't have one of the preseason. So we got Denver minus five there. We have a big old card here. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's a uh, that's the last. What time is that game? One one. Oh, I'm sorry. Looking at the wrong game. Um. That game is at I can't, oh, ten, is that 10 o'clock. Oh, God, 10 o'clock on Saturday night. Oy. What else are you doing? Yeah, that's a good point. On Sunday, we got two games. I wish I'd move more of these games to Sunday. The Giants at the Browns and the 49ers at the Chargers. Browns minus five and a half and the 49ers are minus five and a half. I'm, I'm guessing Daniel Jones doesn't play again. He needs to look at that's a, that's the exception that I make. Like he needs to play. Like it, like I said, Justin Herbert not playing. I sort of get, but Daniel Jones. I mean, Dave Gettleman said earlier this week that he's he has everything at his disposal to be really good. It just needs to make the leap. He's done a lot of things, moving in the right direction, yada yada yada. But he ain't getting better on the bench. Well, no, but I, I think it's more like Joe Judge. Let's see, Joe Judge is. Let me ask you this: So your buddy Mike Glennon played a little bit last week, and then. Uh, Clayton Thorson played the the Northwestern kid. Uh, where are you at on Joe Judge? Because in June, I was like, Joe Judge, he'll be fine. July, late July, I was like, uh, okay, it's, I'm a little worried. Mid, <laughs> Mid-August, everyone's retiring. And now, I don't know if he knows what's going on. Like, if he has control of that team. I'm I, I'm concerned about Joe Judge. And it's, it's the latest, like, honestly, the best coach off the – Bill Belichick co- coaching tree is probably Bill O'Brien, and then close second might be Romeo Cornell. After that, you're like, oh my God, what's going on? Yeah, it's pretty bad. And Bill O'Brien is currently, I think he's back at Alabama now, but I mean, Bill O'Brien is the OC at Alabama. That's correct. He was a good coach. He's in- took the Texas job, and O'Brien replaced him. He's a good coach at uh, for the Texans. He just shouldn't have been general manager. Right. And, that's correct. But he he actually is the clear clear cut in my mind number one coach off the Bill Belichick coaching tree. Joe Judge. In terms of special teams coaches going on to head coach's success, he ain't John Harbaugh as we sit here. Maybe that changes. Yeah. The Joe Judge Joe Judge needs to get it together. They need to win some games. I mean, he can you know, he can win he can win eight, nine, ten games. He'll be fine. Let me ask you this. If you were coaching the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for the season, would you rather have uh Mike McCarthy or Joe Judge as your coach? I'll take Joe Judge. I think I might too. I'm out on McCarthy. Because here's Merry the thing. Monday. Tom Brady can just say, just Joe Judge, worry about the defense special teams. I'll take care of this. Mike McCarthy will want to have his fingers on the offense in Tampa right. Bay because he's the OC guy. All right. Uh, the 49ers are minus five and a half at the Chargers. That might Ooh. be a good bet, too. Yeah. Uh, well, as we've said several times, Justin Herbert ain't playing. Last week, Easton Stick played. 
And uh, who's the other starter that played? Let me check real quick. Come on. God, where's the game? Why is this so difficult? Why can't I not? There it is. Last week, um, Chase Daniel, of course. Chase Daniel, he's earned like $45 million. It's solely a backup of his NFL career. He's the, the true GOAT. He and Easton Stick played. Chase Daniel played most of it. Uh, but in terms of this week, God, I can't. I just can't. It's too much going on. Too much pressure. 49ers, Trey Lance looked great last week. I mentioned earlier he was 5 for 14. He did have four drops. He took four sacks. And he made some mistakes. But, again, the guy hadn't played football in 500 days of what it was. Yeah, yeah it was. there were drops, a lot of drops, too. But here's the thing. The 80-yard touchdown pass, that was that took your breath away. And, yeah, the guy was wide open. But the fact that he rolled left, sort of flipped his, hit, flipped his hips, and then just flicked his wrist and hit, threw a seed, that got your attention. I'm sure he got Jimmy Garoppolo's attention, too. I don't know if Jimmy G's playing. It doesn't really matter because Trey Lance will mean – that means more rep for him. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm with you. Yeah, I, I would anticipate that Trey, you'll see some Trey Lance. I don't think they're really worried about Jimmy G. He's going to be the week one starter. I don't think Trey Lance can take over the job in, in this short of span. I just think they're going to end up no, going. He's not doing he's not taking over the job. Yeah. He'll he'll they'll be, you know, some they'll create an offense. Oh, and Josh Rosen actually played not terribly last week. He did throw an interception. He went and he was week. released. Oh, I didn't know that. He was already? <laughs> yeah, they cut Josh Rosen. Uh, poor Josh Rosen. And he was unclaimed on waivers, too. Oof. Well, that's not – I don't think that's a surprise necessarily. God, remember when it was the debate, Josh Allen versus Josh Rosen? Mm. A lot of L's Which on that. Josh one. will be better? Not P. Prisco. He got that one right. Blind hog finds an acorn every now and then. Blind hog thinks blind squirrel. Blind, it's blind hog, too. Never heard that. Never heard that? I'm sure Pr Prisco appreciates you calling a, a hog over a squirrel. Pete's more of a hog than a squirrel. He's sort of squirrely. <laughs> He's like a, a squirrely hog. <laughs> yeah, I could hear him yelling at his. What do you think he listens? He probably has someone like tape the podcast so he can play it on his on his like boombox. So I can yell. He, like holding like a little acorn and being like <laughs> <laughs> yelling. He also seem, like rolling around in like mud and like. You know. Oh boy. Yeah. All right. That's we reached that portion of the program. Yeah. All right. Okay. One more. Finally, Jaguar Saints dead wrong about how Urban Meyer was going to approach the uh, the old preseason. He what did you think Trevor. he was going to do? Oh, the Steve Spurrier. Oh, he thought he would do more than play yeah. Trevor Lawrence one series. Do we want to? He had two series, but he didn't do a whole bunch. He was also like Zach Wilson, six for nine, and for I think seventy something yards. Had one good throw. Took a sack. I think he actually got stripped sack in one of them. He looked a little bit like not nervous, but discombobulated. But I think that's the understanding that I'm going from the Clemson Tigers to the Jacksonville Jaguars, where not every player across the board is worse. But you know, being accustomed to dominating to now having to realize that you're one of the worst football teams in the NFL. Uh, any thoughts on Tim Tebow's performance in week one before he got got Josh Rosen? Uh, no, we're not talking about Tebow anymore. I thought there was a little too much piling on with the blocking yeah, stuff. Probably. So whatever. The dude's he's more successful than most of us ever will be. So I'll leave it to that. That is true. He is wildly more successful than all of us. Uh, Ian Book got most of the snaps for the Saints last week, but Jameis Winston, 7 of 12. Taysom Hill, 8 of 12. I would uh, anticipate that we see more Winston and more Hill in this game. I don't know. I don't know if Sean Payton knows which way he's leaning. Maybe he does, but if he doesn't, you you would like to get more of a of an idea based on how they play. I I still would roll with Jameis Winston. I think you're on the Taysom Hill camp, but Mike, no, no, I'm on. Um, I'm on. Uh, I'm on Jameis. Oh, okay. My hot yeah. take was that the. That we needed, um, that they should play Taysom if Michael Thomas wasn't playing, or my ice cold take, I guess it was, uh, because you don't have anybody to throw to. But I think Jameis is the better quarterback for sure. I mean, I would go with Jameis. No right. I think that makes sense. I think they play the, they play the Packers in week one. Whoever it is, it ain't going to be an easy game. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to, well, this is a Monday night game, so I guess we'll force a wager on it. Over under 39. <laughs> I need to know, I'm trying to find, I can't find, how much are Trevor Eli and Eli and Peyton doing the Monday night thing for this game or that? Oh, yeah. have, That's a good question. Um, I don't see anything about Trevor Lawrence's playing time in this game. I would assume he's going to get more than, well, it's still a quarterback competition with him and Gardner Minshew, according to the coaching <laughs> staff. <laughs> um, 
I will be looking at the over in this game if we get word that Trevor Lawrence is going to play a full half or thereabouts. What is the over under? Uh, Thirty nine. I don't know. They didn't. Levitsky should not look pretty good. He was sort of a someone as much as you can lean on someone in two series. Someone that Trevor Lawrence leaned on, took a short pass and just runs over people. He, so he's sort of fun to watch. GJ Shark did not play last week. I'm pretty sure. So I don't know what the, his availability is going forward. Uh, but I don't know. Right, they over. That sounds. You're asking. You're asking a lot there. Yeah, I think it's possible. All right. All right, that's it. That is the preseason. Dang, an hour on the dot. Out on the hour on the dot. You love to see it. Um, for Ryan Wilson, I'm Will Brinson. Thanks to Lisa for producing. Mm-hmm. We will be back on Sunday, or actually, I guess Sunday night, Monday, Monday. We'll be back on Monday with a preseason week two recap. Oh, oh, before actually, before I get out of here, I should point out here are the bets, and I'll put them on Action Network uh, on that app so you can track them. KC first half minus two. Jets minus two and a half, Baltimore minus three and a half, Detroit plus five and a half, Indy plus two and a half. It's a lot of preseason action. Rams under 35, Denver minus five, and the 49ers minus five and a half. Is that too many bets in the preseason? Not enough if you're asking me. (laughs) All right, Wilson. Thanks as always, buddy. Talk to you later.